Imagine this. You're 29 years old working as a sports agent. You successfully negotiate contracts for your Minnesota Vikings clients. Things are looking up. Then the general manager of the Vikings looks you up and down and asks, do you speak Barcelonan? Do you mean Spanish? He says, yeah. Took it in high school, why? Well, how would you like to be the first general manager of the Barcelona Dragons? It's a team you've never heard of because it doesn't exist yet. The NFL has big plans to bring American football to Europe, and the Dragons will be one of their inaugural teams. That scenario isn't fiction. In fact, it's exactly what happened to Andrew Brandt in 1990. I'm three months from opening day on ABC television. I have no coaches, no staff, no players, didn't know where I was going, and was moving to a country that didn't know what football was. Brandt realized he was in for a wake-up call. The first being that Barcelonan, of course, isn't a language. In that region of Spain, people speak both Spanish and Catalan. Anyway, this was the beginning of a 16-year effort by the NFL to conquer the hearts of European sports fans. This is the rise, fall, and rebirth of NFL Europe. In 1989, network TV execs approached the NFL with a question. What are the odds we can air even more football in the spring? The NFL was intrigued. So Commissioner Pete Rozelle created committees and brought in former Dallas Cowboys president Tech Schramm to investigate if globalization was feasible. It seemed promising. The NFL was on track to sell 50 million in licensed products in Britain alone, and American networks were interested. So the NFL voted to create the World League of American Football. American pro football tackles the world. With teams in the US, Canada, and Europe. But this new venture was at a crossroads right out of the gate. Most saw it as a developmental league with some financial revenue. But newly appointed President Schramm wanted to go all out and make it an independent major league. So in October of 1990, the NFL fired Schramm and replaced him with Mike Lynn general manager of the Minnesota Vikings, who was more aligned with the NFL's vision. In 1991, the league was set to start with 10 teams, six American, one Canadian, and three European, the London Monarchs, Frankfurt Galaxy, and Barcelona Dragons. But setting up these new European teams was no easy task. For Brandt, the process was chaotic. You talk about teams that are put together in months and months, this was put together in five days. Oliver Luck, general manager of the Frankfurt Galaxy, had this to say in 2017. I can't emphasize how little had been done to prepare to launch a pro sports franchise. There was no stadium deal, not one employee, no local staff, PR. Our first game was March 25th. We had all of three months. The next step, getting fans to watch. From the moment I got off the plane, we met our ticket manager. And I'll never forget as long as I live, he said to me with some pride, Andrew, <laughs> we have sold 173 tickets, season tickets. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, how many does the stadium hold? 40,000. <laughs> and I said, that's not good. So Brandt essentially threw a Hail Mary to attract fans. He handed out tickets and even begged the general manager of the Football Club of Barcelona, one of the most popular soccer teams in the world, to showcase the Dragons during an upcoming match. We got up in our full gear, we kicked the ball, we threw the ball, the announcer said, I think he said, I hope he said, in Catalan, uh, tomorrow night, Montjuic Stadium. When the league kicked off on March 24th, 1991, 19,000 fans showed up to the Dragons' debut. And it was a pretty successful first season. Over 61,000 fans attended the first championship game where the Monarchs defeated the Dragons 21 to zero. But the hype couldn't sustain the league past a second season. Network ratings were disappointing, the league had lost millions, and there was labor unrest. So the NFL pulled the plug. But only for three years. In 1995, the World League returned. This time with a network contract from Fox, a $40 million four-year budget, fresh sponsorship deals, new strategies, and a narrower focus on Europe. Now teams would be located in London, Barcelona, Frankfurt, Amsterdam, Dusseldorf, and Edinburgh. But as the years went on, the league realized it had to continue to evolve. So in 1998, the league rebranded again, this time to NFL Europe. But that didn't do much, so the league condensed teams to where the game was received best, Germany. 
By 2005, NFL Europe had five teams in Germany and one in Amsterdam. There are a lot of American military bases in Germany. And I think perhaps some people had that background. In 2006, the NFL decided to do yet another rebrand, this time as NFL Europa. But that didn't last long either. In 2007, NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell shut the league down and the NFL opted a new strategy, playing just a few games overseas each year. We took the strategy to its next logical place and, and gave fans a better opportunity to actually be in love with the sport. So why didn't this league work? Well, for one, the goals weren't that clear from the start. I never got a feeling like they were settled on one. The rebrands are a consequence of how the strategy is performing. And so the fact that it gets rebranded tells you that something needs to move on and evolve. When the NFL broke into Europe in 1991, it not only had to attract fans, but also teach them the sport. Brandt recalls one particular moment when a receiver hauled in a 70-yard pass, breaking three tackles on his way to scoring a touchdown, which normally brings standing ovations from an American crowd. In Barcelona, that play got polite applause. But when the kicker successfully kicked the extra point following the touchdown, fans erupted. And all of a sudden, I'm like, oh my god, we're not in Kansas anymore. Accustomed to their beloved soccer, some Europeans found the game's pacing too slow. When you're at a soccer match, it's just, it's loud the entire game. So they're teaching the fans that during, when Hamburg is on defense, everybody get loud. And then you'd hear, okay, now Hamburg is on offense, and everybody get really quiet. And while broadcasting agreements can be complex, Local media often didn't even air the games. In Germany, where the league was most popular, networks aired the championship game a day later. General managers recognized that in order to make the game more attractive, they had to bring a little slice of American life to Europe. I brought over, first of all, two Miami Dolphin cheerleaders. I taught the, them to teach the women how to dance like that. Las Chicas del Dragons, they love that. They were more popular than the team the elephants and the cheerleaders and all that. And it almost became all kind of like a theme park. But even this got old. So, of course, after the first first season, the popularity just died down. There were probably more fans at the tailgates than that there were at our games. Additionally, most players came and went pretty quickly. See, the league was operating as a developmental one. Once players caught the eyes of the NFL teams back home, they left. If you're going to develop a, a loyal following, people like to know names. People like to know that they're going to go back and they're going to be able to see a, a Kurt Warner playing over there more than just one year. At the end of the day, it's hard to sell a minor league. It's not the NFL. You don't have the, the very top best stars playing over there. Most guys are just trying to make an NFL roster. And when you don't have as good of a, um, a league for people to go watch, um, you're, you're not going to get as much support. Associate Professor Isaac Wu reviewed almost 500 news and industry trade press articles in an attempt to determine the true cause of the league folding from a PR perspective. His findings? That the NFL couldn't create relationships with the public. They kept saying money. Yeah, we want to make some money. <laughs> you know? uh, but like, if you want to make money, you need to yeah, know, know the people first. But according to Waller, he believes the goals that were set were met, besides the economic side of it. It lost a lot of money for a very sustained period of time. In the end, the NFL lost $30 million per season, estimating a total loss of around $400 million. So clearly, the league had a lot of challenges. Still, there were upsides. Several superstars and Hall of Famers, like Kurt Warner, started in Europe. The league did bring awareness and fans to the sport, and it ultimately increased the amount of foreign-born players in the NFL. And remember the shift in strategy to the annual games back in 2007? Well, in London, fans grew to really love the showcase games, which continue to draw huge crowds to multiple stadiums. There's even continued interest in a permanent NFL team in the UK. 
The NFL also played games in Mexico and now has its sights on Germany as a potential host country for games. And while soccer is still king in Europe, Waller believes that fans have room in their lives for other sports. It will find a way into their lives, either as an additive or as a displacement. How do you believe the NFL looks back on that 16-year run? With incredible pride. It, it built the foundation for the stage that we're now at. It could probably work a little bit better today. Part of me kind of thinks it might have been stopped a little too early. Do you think they pulled the plug too soon? I do. They're never going to be even close to what the NFL does, but I think it's like any minor league. What are your expectations? What is your talent? Uh, yeah, it could work at a limited scale. And now, another American Football League is giving it a shot. It's called the European League of Football, created by owners SEH Sports and Entertainment Holding and Patrick Essu. Games began in June of 2021. This league even struck a deal with the NFL to use some of the same team names. So the Hamburg Sea Devils are back. But for how long? Well, that all remains to be seen. Will the European League of Football be a success? What do you think? Leave a comment below and make sure to like and subscribe for more.